Hi, welcome to another tutorial in my series on permutations and combinations. And in this tutorial we're going to look at combinations. So what do we mean by combinations? Well in the past we had examples like where we had two different items or two different letters, A, B say. And we could arrange these or permutate them in two different ways, like A, B, or we could swap them around and get B, A. Now by a combination or selection, A, B and B, A are regarded as the same selection. Order doesn't matter. So what we have here is one selection or one combination of the two letters A and B. If I had say three letters, let's say we have the letters A, B and C. We know we can rearrange these, permutate them three factorial ways as we've seen in earlier tutorials. And those permutations were ABC, ACB, BAC, BCA and so on. Okay, six of them. That was given by three factorial, three times two times one. But how many different combinations have we got of the three letters? Well, they're all essentially exactly the same. Combination or selection. So what we have got is just simply one. Order doesn't matter then in a combination. But OK, it's not going to be as easy as this. We're going to get more advanced problems later on. So suppose we had three items and we want to take two. So suppose we have items or letters like ABC, three different items, and we just want to take any two. What could we have? Well, we could have AB and then swap those around, get BA. Or we could take, say, a C and an A and swap those two round and have A and C. And there's one more. We could take C and B and B and C. Permutations of A, B and C, different arrangements, would be six because there'll be three ways of filling the first space, two ways of filling the next space, three times two, which would be six. But how many combinations are there? Well, there's only one, two, three. So how can we work out number of combinations when we're selecting only part of a set? In this case, selecting two from three. Well, we could work it out something like this, that the number of combinations, I'll just call it comms for short, equals. Well, we've got two spaces to fill. And if we looked at the permutations, there'll be three ways of filling the first space with a letter, and then for any of those three, there'll be simply two for filling the second space. But any time that we've got two items in these spaces, they can be rearranged amongst themselves two factorial ways. So we have to divide by two factorial. So what this comes to is simply three, the three that you can see here. Now we can extend this then to harder questions. And we've got one here. How many different combinations, selections of three letters can be made from the five letters A, B, C, D, E? Well, to do this, we've basically got three spaces to fill. So if we were just looking, say, at the number of permutations, let's just write that in, the number of different ways we could arrange three letters, one, two, three, then there'll be five ways of filling the first space, so it'd have five, and then for every one of those five, there'll be four ways of filling the next space. And then for every one of those, there'll be three ways of filling the final space. 
5 times 4 times 3 then, a total of 60 different permutations of three letters. And I've written them all out for you here. And that took some time to do actually, but there you go, 60 of them. But when it comes to the number of combinations, all we're looking for is number of selections, if you like, where order doesn't matter. And I've arranged them into columns, as you can see, because when we take the three letters A, B, C, it's the same combination as A, C, B, or B, A, C, and so on. So we can see that if we take the number of permutations, 5 times 4 times 3, in any one of these permutations, you can arrange the letters amongst themselves three factorial ways. 3 times 2 times 1. Six different ways. And that's why in this block they're all the same combination. And then in this block they're all the same combination. And so on. So we have got all these different combinations. So what we need to do for the number of permutations, we need to divide it then by how many ways we can switch or rearrange the letters within themselves, the three letters, which is going to be 3 factorial. And if you do this sum, what you get then is that it equals 10. So we just put equals 10 there. Now there is a way that we could work these out on your calculator. There's a special button. It's called the NCR button. I'll just write it in here, NCR. And I've got a tutorial on this, okay, where, how you can make it work on your calculator. You'll see a link below this video if you're looking at it on my site. Now, NCR is defined as N factorial divided by N minus R factorial, all divided by R factorial. And so for a question like this, we are choosing from five items, we choose R items, and R is going to be 3, 5C3 as we often call it. So that's going to be 5 factorial divided by N minus R, so that would be 5 take away 3, that would be 2, 2 factorial, and then we've got times r factorial, and the r here is 3, so it's 3 factorial. And if you work this out, you'll see that you'd have 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 for 5 factorial, all divided by 2 factorial, which is 2 times 1, and times another 3 factorial. And can you see that 2 times 1 cancels out with the 2 times 1 there? And so you're just left with 5 times 4 times 3, all over 3 factorial, which is what we had over here. And so it comes to 10. So this is a handy way of calculating combinations. When you've got N different items and you want to select R different items. Well, I hope that's given you some idea. and. What I'll do in my next tutorial is I'll give you a few common examples on combinations. Okay, and as usual, thanks for listening and I hope this has been of some use to you.